Good morning guys. Welcome to quarantine school day 30. That means that I've done 30 of these videos and we've had 30 days of school where we haven't been in the classroom. Kind of a big milestone. Some of us are getting burned out. Some of us are um, the novelty of distance learning is wearing off. Uh, some of you guys are just starting to pick up on realizing that we still are doing distance learning. Uh, but wherever you're at, I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you are able to stay strong, stay motivated, and find your own personal peace for uh, how to get through this strange time that we're in. Today, talk about a few things. Um, first of all, right now we have a meteor shower going on, the Ita Aquarids. These are remnants of Halley's Comet that travels through our solar system every 75 years and we come through crumbles of this comet twice a year in October and then again uh, in May. So if you get up just a little bit before dawn and look to the east, you should be able to see um, some meteors flashing through the sky. Um, it's kind of tough because the, the moon is getting really close to a full moon. So uh, somewhere between 4 and 5 a.m. today, well, today's over, but tomorrow, maybe tomorrow the next day, take a look if you get up early see a meteor shower. <clears throat> All right, also, this day in history, Abraham Lincoln was buried May 4th, 1865. That was the day that they finally put him in the ground and um, they had had a, basically a tour, a train tour of taking his body around for everybody to pay their respects uh, before they buried him. Coming soon, later, uh, Hopefully later today I'll get this other video out. I'm going to do a quarantine school special edition video. Uh, every year with my eighth graders, I give them a video. No, I give them a video. I give them a lesson, a series of lessons on how to prepare themselves for high school and uh, the career and how to get jobs and interviews and things like that. So. Uh, I can't do that with you in the classroom this time, but I'm going to try and put something together that will help you and it'll be optional, um, but I'll post it to my YouTube so you guys can check that out. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, okay, so today's lesson, we're going to focus on how did the U.S. government try to help the freedmen after the Civil War. So Civil War was over, the slaves were freed, but like I mentioned on the last video, the freeing of the slaves was an ongoing process. The, the southern people were not in favor of freeing the slaves, so you had to really work to make sure that once you freed a slave, that slave was still given the rights of a free person and they weren't treated like a slave. So. Uh, first, we want to define what are freedmen. Freedmen are slaves that are now free. They were freed. They are free people, but they were once slaves. They are extremely disadvantaged. They have limited skills, no education, and the social structure of the South was built to keep them from opportunity. So they were not able to, to go about getting a job frequently. They were put into positions where people in the community would only hire them back if they were former slaves and people agreed that well I won't hire anybody except somebody who was my slave before and some of the conditions of those contracts seemed an awful lot like the slavery that we saw before except that maybe the slave would be responsible for their own housing and medical care but everything else would be just like slavery or so maybe it would be worse. These are things that uh, are challenges that we're trying to face after the Civil War. So what was the plan to help them? There are two parts to the plan to help them. First was constitutional amendments. We're going to talk about the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendment. Those are constitutional amendments that were part of Reconstruction. And then we're going to talk about the Freedmen's Bureau. This was the organization set up by the federal government to help the slaves then and other, white, um, other poor people, including whites, in the South after the Civil War. All right, uh, the state... Friedman. Okay, so amendments to the Constitution. First thing you want to think about is what is a Constitution? Constitution is the law of the land. Amendments to the Constitution are slight changes to this or additions to this, things that make, uh, make an, a new level of uh, legal enforcement for any law. 
This is something that covers all the states instead of just being a state-by-state -state basis. The states have the ability to have certain things legal in one state and other states have other things illegal and that's their right, that's their choice, but the federal laws are ones that cover all of the states and that's where amendments to the Constitution come in. The Supreme Court, when judging a case, looks to the Constitution to evaluate the laws and the judgments, and this helps decide for future, uh, future rulings whether or not something is allowable or if it's something that it is illegal. Amendments to the Constitution, it's only been done 27 times in the last 233 years. We do this without, uh, we don't try to do it very often because we want to take it very seriously. We want to make sure that our Constitution is something that lasts and not something that we change with every election, which very easily could be something that would dilute the lasting nature of the Constitution. So, first amendment we're going to talk about, the 13th Amendment, 1865. We could sum it up in a few words. Slavery does not exist within the United States. That is what the Constitutional Amendment, the 13th Amendment, was about. Slavery is over. That's all it said. 14th Amendment. All right, this one gets a little more complicated. It says, everyone that's born here is a citizen. Everyone is equally protected under the laws of the United States, and no one can take those rights away from you. Very important. This takes us back to the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is something to remember. We are born with these rights. These are rights that no one can give to you. They can't take them away from you. They're unalienable. That means that you can't take them away. The same way when you guys go out and you sign a contract, a labor contract, or a, an apartment rental contract, or something like that, there are certain rights that you have that you cannot sign away. You cannot sign away a, a right to say, you know, well, I'm, I'm just going to give up my right to freedom of speech, or my right to uh, assemble, or things like that. That's not something that people can take away from you. So, that's, um, that's the 14th Amendment. All right, 15th Amendment, 1870. This one took a little bit longer. Every U.S. citizen can vote. Whew. All right, no limits on race, on color of your skin. Having been a slave before, you can't say, well, you can't vote because your grandparents were slaves. You can't say that. This amendment was made because the southern states were using laws, and we'll talk about these laws, the Black Codes, the, the Jim Crow laws, we'll talk about these in a future episode, but these are laws that the southern states were using to keep the African Americans from voting. And it wasn't in, uh, voting rights have come a long way. So now we have, a lot of voting rights and a lot of people are able to vote. More and more people than ever before are allowed to vote. We have women who can vote. We have people who are 18 can vote. We no longer have restrictions on property rights. It wasn't until 1856 that property rights, that, that somebody owning property was actually limited uh, removed from the limitations of who could vote. And South Carolina was the last one to remove that that restriction uh, because a lot of people that don't own any property, don't own a certain amount of land, uh, were limited for being able to vote. And being able to allow more people to vote brings us closer to that concept of a true democracy. But even in the North, blacks or people who didn't have property had various limitations on who could vote. So. The 15th Amendment, allowing people to vote, no matter their race, their color of their skin, or having been a slave, was a big deal. Now, whether or not it's enforced is the second problem, and we'll talk about that in a future episode. Last thing we're talking about today is the Freedmen's Bureau. This was established in 1865, right at the end of the Civil War. This was an organization set up by the government to send people into the South to help with Reconstruction, help to rebuild the South. 
and this wasn't just for African Americans, just not just for freed men, but also for the freed women. This was for the children. This was for the poor whites. This was for anybody in the South that was suffering and needed to rebuild. Remember, they'd just gone through four years of civil war. Even the poor farmers that some of those people going, coming back to their lands, the land was covered with weeds, there was pines that were growing where they used to have fields. They really needed help rebuilding and there were several ways that we rebuilt. There was food, making sure these people had food, clothing, medical care, schools, legal aid. If you needed to sue somebody, if you needed to make sure that your rights were being enforced, you might need to take, take them to court and the Freedmen's Bureau would help you with that. Uh, sometimes they even found a way to get you some land. If you didn't have any land and you wanted some land, they might find some Confederate land that had been confiscated and find a way to grant you some of that land so you would have a start on your own two feet with land that you could call your own and you could pass it on to your children. That was a big deal because for, for slaves that had been uh, owned by somebody for so many years and had been restricted. It was illegal to teach slaves to read and write, so education was a huge deal. Being able to learn things and learn how to stand up for yourself, learning how to uh, get medical care when you aren't relying on the master, learning how to um, get clothing and food when you don't have a starting savings of money that you can use for getting that. That was, These are all things that the South needed in a large scale and the Freedmen's Bureau went down there to do that. I'm going to give you a link to some documents that are from this time period and related to the Freedmen's Bureau's effort. I want you to take a look at them. There's some marriage certificates, there's some uh, legal contracts of um, employment like hiring somebody and um, I want you to think about are these evidence that the Freedmen's Bureau was being effective or were they not very effective and these were still uh, abusing the rights of African Americans? Your goals for the day, make sure you log into Schoology, get your attendance taken, and Google Classroom for the assignments. Uh, Reconstruction Era packet assignment, this is your big assignment for the week. Use chapter 16 to find out the answers. It's nothing too complicated, a lot are just fill in the blank but I want you to look up what these things are. And, uh, and that's it for the day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Oh, we got a Canada goose coming overhead saying goodbye. And I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon.